Now what we want to talk about are those common signs that the angels are around because as we move into channeling, we're going to see some of these signs. They're going to start to pop up. And as we work with invocations, for example, the Inu Raze that we learned yesterday. And again, there's, there's a little um, accompaniment in your student portal if you've checked that out. But if we invoke them, well, they come and they come every single time. And sometimes they do bring some evidences. And let's go through the most common things to look for. And if you see these things, don't talk yourself out of them. Don't say, oh, well, that's just normal. I mean, it's probably not my angels. No. Anytime you see these evidences and these signs, we want to acknowledge them. We want to interact with them. We want to ask the signs question. Maybe we see questions. Sorry, gotta slow down. I'm excited. If we see a flash of light, we want to say, okay, I saw that, got it, thank you. What are you trying to tell me? Tell me more. Develop this for me so that I can understand. Speak clearly. So when you see these common signs, I want you to remember to do that yourself. All right, the first angel sign, super common, is light anomalies with your eyes open. These are those flashes of lights. These are often pinpricks, what looks like a little pinprick of light that comes into your naked vision. So your eyes are open. You're actually seeing this with your eyes open. Now these can appear with different coloring. Most commonly, it's kind of a white color or a white gold color, a pure gold color, and often it's an indigo blue. For example, if you're meditating or if you're working with your spiritual connection, it's very common to see a little flash of indigo blue that's sometimes your third eye opening up as you are expanding but it's also the presence of angels and emissaries that are around now light anomalies can also be things like orbs orbs are just that they're, they're round they can show up in pictures we see a lot of those sometimes in the lab but you can also see these with the naked eye i'd like to see with the show of hearts if any of you have ever seen an orb with the naked eye there are actually reports from all over the world of people who have these orbs kind of floating into their space, into their rooms. Some of these orbs even talk to them. Some of these orbs deliver what's called a download, just a package of information. We've got hearts, hearts, hearts. So some of you have seen these orbs. That's commonly angelic. Now with lights and flashes of light, for me, I have a personal rule. If the lights happen, from the middle of the room or the middle of the space or my, the middle of my line of vision and up, I consider that to be angelic, personally. If the light happens, if I'm seeing sparks or flashes or orbs and it's happening from the middle down to the lower end of the room, that to me is usually something like departed loved ones, ambient spirits in the area, because believe me, we share the space with so many other types of beings and they're always around us as well and sometimes I'll see sparks and if, for example if I have like an ambient spirit or an earthbound moving through my space which they that's very rare but it's almost as if as they walk or move sparks are kicked up a little bit and I can see them but it's usually towards the floor angels usually show up towards the ceiling or kind of higher in my space that's me your mileage may vary I also want to say that these colors, these orbs can have distinct colors. If you go back and look at the complete guide to Archangels, you'll see, well, Archangel Michael is associated with royal blue, with gold and with purple. Other angels are associated with pink or green or purple, lavender, all of the different colors. And guides, by the way, saints also have their own frequency and their own colors. And so as you work with your angels, you might notice sparks that aren't just white or gold or indigo blue. They're pink for Hamuel or Jophiel. They are a copper goldy color for Gabriel. They are green for Raphael and so on and so forth. These are light anomalies we see with our eyes open. Now, when this first started to happen to me, I thought like my retina was detaching. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my vision. And I always recommend when you're having physical evidences like this, you just wanna get yourself checked out, right? If you're getting a lot of ringing in the ears, which is also angelic and dimensional, it could be tinnitus and you might wanna to go to the doctor and check that out. So I went to the doctor, checked everything out, I was just fine and that's how I could rule out that it was a physical thing and that it was indeed something energetic. Next, 
sign that your angels are around are light anomalies with your eyes closed. This is something that I do. I'm going to share with you. I think you should try it. When I am going to bed at night, I'm starting to get drowsy. And when you're drowsy, you're kind of in a trance state. It's called the hypnagogic state, and it's a very, very psychic and a connected state. I often will ask my angels to show me how many of them are around me, and I'll include my guides as well. And I'll see with my eyes closed, little pinpricks of light start to appear. When I first started doing it, there was like two, maybe three, four. But as I continued to ask and continued to to invite them to step forward. It was like a, it was a galaxy of stars. There were so many different lights that would show up. And sometimes they're very faint and sometimes they're quite bright. And again, this is with your eyes closed. You can also see movement of light when your eyes are closed. You should really pay attention to what you're seeing when your eyes are closed because we have within us what I call a built-in meditation system. I used to use it as a child and I didn't even know I was doing it. I would follow the swirls of light that I would see with my eyes closed and I would breathe along with those swirls of light and it would get me into an altered state. And I was much more spiritually connected when I would do that. So there's all kinds of cool light anomalies that you can see with your eyes closed. But one of the things that you can see are the angelic lights. So ask them for them because they will give them to you. Next. Super common, already happening here in the group with some of the students, are dreams. Dreams are the easiest way for spirit, big S, to communicate with us. Whether that is an angel, a spirit guide, a mentor in spirit, a departed loved one. Anything that is in these, in these higher dimensional realms has a better, well, has better and broader access to us when we're dreaming. Why? Because when we're dreaming, our guard is let down. Our brain isn't functioning in the same way. It's in a different brain state. We're not filtering it through all the questions that we always and incessantly have about what's coming through. Instead, spirit is just able to access us. This is why deceased loved ones first usually appear to us in the form of a dream just to say, hey, I'm okay. Hey, I love you. Hey, goodbye. They're doing that because that's the easiest way. And angels use the same process. Actually, the way I see it clairvoyantly is kind of a column or a pillar of light that extends up from the crown chakra all the way up. It's almost like a chute that they can pop down through and into your dreams, into your field, into your energy. And angels love to do this. So someone said in our group that they had a dream about me. And I was sitting across the table from them and I had this interesting symbol. I think she said it was a half moon with an arrow and a gemstone at the end of one arrow. I forget what it was, but it was like a dial or a meter. And I was teaching her how to use this meter in her third eye in order to talk to different angels. And as the meter or the dial would turn, the color of the gemstone turned, if I read that correctly. And what I told her was, this is so common for angels and so common for guides. They will appear to you as a person that you know, or as a person that might represent a principal. And for a lot of people, I might represent a teacher principal. This is an opportunity to learn. Now, but what you're really doing is having an encounter with a mentor or with an angel. And so for the person who experienced that, I have no doubt, and I'm getting goosebumps right now, that you were actually having an interaction with an angel in your dream who was trying to teach you a system of communication. Now, this is personalized specific for you. This dial, this meter has something to do with you. And I gave you some advice, didn't I? In the, in the group, I said, draw what you saw in my third eye, draw that half moon, draw that arrow, draw that gemstone, because this is a symbol and spirit uses symbols all the time to communicate things. Spirit will use symbols just to give us downloads of information. All we have to do is meditate on the symbol in order to unlock it, unpack it, activate it, or receive what it is that they're trying to give us. And so for you, the person who had this, and I think it was Nicole, I think it was Nicole who did, for you, 
I would draw the symbol which externalizes it, takes it outside of the inner world and it adds it to the material world and that's an extra layer of energy. I would have it on a piece of paper, I would paint it if you're a painter, I would, do, or I would just render it in a special or a sacred way and then I would take that with me into a special meditation and I would say, what does this mean? How do I use this? Give me more information while holding in your mind's eye, visualizing the symbol itself and see what comes through because it's an offering. Symbols are an offering. Dreams also contain information, knowledge, and invitations and offerings. So that's really cool. That's an easy way, Nicole and everybody else, for angels to talk directly to you. So pay attention to your dreams. I think it was Tiff who said, I had a dream. I think something was happened, but then I forgot about it. I should have written it down. Absolutely. Everybody should have a dream journal. We should always wake up, try to remember everything that we can, even if it's just a feeling, even if it's just a color or an image, and we should write it down because the act of writing it down embeds it and makes us more likely to have more dreams and to recall those dreams. And because it's such a psychic state, because dreams are happening in the domain of the subconscious, which is the creator aspect of who we are, it's important to know what's happening in that state. It's important to remember as much as we can. Dreams are landscapes and playing grounds that angels love to use, so pay attention to them. The next thing is super common, temperature changes, walking through your space and all of a sudden you feel kind of a breeze or a rush of air, maybe cool air or warm air. If it's cold, you might feel warm air. Now, ambient spirits like earthbounds and other types of beings we might call ghosts and things like that also have a temperature signature. The way to differentiate between the two is that angels feel good, <laughs> whether they are impressing upon us through our awareness, through sensations in the body. It always feels good. There's always a higher vibration to the interaction. So it's like a cool breeze or a warm hug, but temperature changes in your space. As you're sitting there, maybe something shifts or you feel something, that's often your angels. Next, patterns and repetition. I like to follow this rule. If something happens three or more times, I need to be paying attention to that. Angels love to use sequences, numbers, patterns, coincidences, and repetition. I, this is my classic example. I always use Bali. I think it's because I want to go to Bali. <laughs> I want to have a retreat in Bali. But for example, if for some reason Bali comes into your awareness, maybe somebody says, hey, I'm going to Bali. And you make note of that. That's interesting. Oh, she's going to Bali. And then the next day you walk into the coffee shop and there's a big poster about Bali. You can see the little huts and the water. You should notice that. Well, whoa, that's two Bali's in a row. Yesterday my friend mentioned Bali and today I'm seeing this poster of beautiful Bali. Okay, I noticed that. But if it happens a third time, maybe your friend says, hey, read this book and you open the book and it's taking place in Bali <laughs> and, it, and they're happening proximate to each other, meaning it's not happening over the course of three years. It's happening over the course of a week or over a few days, or it's happening over the course of a month. If you notice it happening in threes, pay attention, because again, this is how angels love to talk to us. And all you wanna do when you notice a repetition or a pattern is acknowledge it. Say, hey, I'm catching that. I'm smelling what the rock is cooking. I've noticed Bali three times. What are you trying to say to me, spirit? Angels, what are you trying to give me? I'm open. You can also take this into a special meditation. You can take a mind picture of that poster you saw of Bali, the hut, the water. Take a mind picture of it. I like to call these mind Polaroids. And then bring that visualization up in a meditation and ask your angels to tell you more about Bali. What's significant about it? Because they will do that. Additionally, feathers and coins. Somebody mentioned a coin, I think it was Tiff, was shown in a dream, an Atlantean coin. Is that correct? I think it was Tiff. Coins, angels. They often are departed loved ones as well, especially dimes. If you find a lot of dimes, that's often a departed loved one just leaving you a message, but angels love to use coins as well as feathers, so pay attention to that. Angels will also call your name, not scary, not like, not like that. 
<laughs> when angels talk to us, it's lilting, it's harmonious, it's beautiful. Again, angels feel good. Now, I'm clairaudient, which means I can hear into the world of spirit. So I hear voices all the time. <laughs> I do, and I always have, and my mother was also very clairaudient. Sometimes I'll hear my husband talking when he's in Canada or he's somewhere else because he travels quite a lot, but I can hear him actually talking to me in the house. So I'm clairaudient, but when angels talk to me, it's a different vibration. The quality of the room changes. It's usually not a full-blown message, it's my name or something like that. And it sounds beautiful. It feels beautiful when you hear it, but they do like to do that. Next would be essences. Now this, again, you can get confused a little bit with departed loved ones because departed loved ones love to give us fragrances and sometimes odors that would help us to recognize who they are. My father, when he comes around, I smell cigarettes. When my mother comes around, I smell Lorigan perfume straight out of the 70s and the 80s. When angels come around, sometimes they will give you a scent. In my experience, these scents tend to be floral, sweet, perfumey, sometimes spicy or like incense, like frankincense, that's an angelic incense type of an essence. But pay attention if you pick up something, this is actually called clairaliance. This is a psychic ability to smell into the world of spirit. There's also something called clairgustance, which is to taste in the world of spirit. Sometimes we'll taste, mediums often will have this gift. They'll be able to taste something like dirt or blood or, or, or something. The, the spirit is actually projecting onto them a message of how they passed and they'll taste these things. While your grandmother might come and you might taste chocolate chip cookies or so on and so forth. Angels, I haven't had a lot of experience with them giving me great flavors in my mouth, but if they did, I would tell you it would be delicious because angels feel good. Next, another subject we've been talking about is the music of the spheres, the tones, the ringing, the frequencies, sometimes the rhythms. If you listen to it, sometimes it can even sound like a jazz band. They're having fun over there, wherever they are. But also music, singing, you hear though, clairaudiently, especially as you're connecting more deeply, you can hear the music of the spheres and the angels when they move, they make a sound. There's a reason they talk about the choir of angels. The angels, the frequency of their existence emits a signal and that has a sound. And so when they are around, you can hear those tones, that ringing in your ear. Pay attention to that. When you notice that, it's likely that there's something spiritual happening in your environment, barring, of course, tinnitus, which you should check out if you're worried about it. Next would be nephilomancy, which is essentially just reading clouds. Have you ever just sat down on a beautiful day and looked at the clouds and they seem to take a shape or they seem to form a letter or they seem to be speaking to you in a certain way? This is one of those areas where if we're not paying attention, we're absolutely going to miss it. But think about it. Angels are associated with the air, with wings, with the sky. And so they often will leave us little encouraging messages in the clouds. So pay attention to them. My husband and I were driving home one night and there was, I swear to you, a cloud formation with three different parts. So three different separate clouds, but it was together. It looked like Jesus in the middle with two angels right on the side. I took a picture of it. It was amazing. And I felt strongly, I still feel strongly. That was just a message for me. And at the time I really, I really needed that message, but if you pay attention, you'll be surprised at what you see. Okay, next. One of the ways you can tell that your angels are around, you sense them. You see an image. Now this happens as we begin to work more deeply with our angels. Each angel might have a symbol, might have a color for you, might have an image. You might see a wildflower. You might see a certain gemstone. And that angel is telling you, hey, I'm here because you're seeing a clairvoyant image. You sense them in this way. We also sense through feelings, don't we? This is the clairsentience. They feel really good. You get a rush of ascended energy, sometimes a quickening in the heart. When my angels draw near, it's as if my breath is snatched away. I'm like, <gasps> kind of like that and I get this 
heart flutter and my throat feels like there's like a little dove in there and it's just this vibration takes place i feel it in my physical body and that's how i know that they're there also hearing again tones and frequencies and we sense them in the heart yesterday um, as a group live we went through heart brain coherence and we connected with the portal of our heart and I don't know about you, I mean, if you recall, for those of you who were there with me, I was bawling. It was so powerful. And this heart portal is the domain of the angels. And the gatekeeper, as far as my experience, is Raphael and his associate, associated angels. This is all heart. And so when the angels are around, we can feel it. Sometimes we can get teary-eyed. We don't know why. We can cry or we just feel this burst of what feels like unity consciousness. It feels like dimensional connectedness. There's an author who's fantastic. If you've never checked him out, may he rest in peace. He died a couple years ago. His name is Colin Wilson. What a prolific writer on the paranormal. But he also wrote about something called the peak experience, which is this super conscious experience when all of a sudden, seemingly randomly, you feel connected to everything. There's a flood that goes through you of just joy, love. I feel so awesome in this moment. Thank you, God, in me. You may, you may know why. There may be a precursor event or there may not be. That feeling, though, of the peak experience, completely angelic. And when they come around, they open us in that way. So heart activation and feeling that rush of love is a sign that our angels are around. Number patterns, which we mentioned, sequences, numbers, 1111, 222, 333, 2323. Things that have a seeming pattern to them are often little messages from our angels. Now, you can look up the definition of what that number means. I think that's okay. I don't really subscribe a whole lot to definitions other people give to me. I like to discover those for myself. I like to ask the question myself, well, what does this 2222 mean? Why am I seeing this repetition of numbers and have spirit answer that for me? Because the answers I get are often quite different than what you might find on an angel website. Now, numbers aren't just messages, by the way. Spirit has shown me that these numbers are also activation codes. And when you notice them, especially 1111, if you're noticing 1111 a lot, how many of you are hearts if you are? 1111, you're noticing it twice a day, you're noticing it maybe in videos, you just continue to see this number. That's a common light worker activation. And what I mean by that is you're a light worker and you're being turned on to your purpose. And when we see 1111, that's another thing we've got to acknowledge. I see that. I'm noticing that I receive that as an activation. I accept that it's really important in order to interact with it so that you can receive the up leveling that they are giving to you. Next is crown and third eye activation. So when the angels draw near, they can affect you a lot of different physical ways. We talked yesterday about me convulsing in a chair in a meditation room because the energy was so powerful. One of the other ways they can do uh, affect you physically is to blow out. <laughs> they can blow out your third eye and your crown. You can just feel this rush of energy in those areas because what they're doing is they're interacting with your pineal gland. They're coming into your field. Your pineal gland is a small cone shaped gland located right in the center of your head. And it is the interface literally between the physical world and the world of spirit. And so when spirit draws near and wants to talk to you, they do that through the interface of the pineal gland, again, right in the center of the head, connected strongly with the third eye. In fact, within the pineal gland, did you know there are rods and cones just like we have in our eyeballs? It is a gland of perception that spirit will use when they're interacting with us. So we can feel a lot of sensations around the head, back of the neck, scalp, constricting energy sensations, also third eye, maybe a sense of heaviness. Like it also feels to me almost as if somebody's got a finger and they're pressing right into this area between my brows. There's just kind of a heaviness. That's activation. That's often because we have emissaries and even angels that are proximate to us. Last but not least is physical touching. Sometimes angels will touch you. Now I get creeped out by that and my angels know that. So they don't touch me a lot. <laughs> like if I'm alone in my house, 
please don't touch me. <laughs> That's just gonna throw me off and I'll have a reaction and it's gonna be counterintuitive to what they're trying to do. But often they will brush by, sometimes a very light touch on the shoulder, hey, we're here, or hey, pay attention to that. Again, with angels, it feels good. With a ambient spirit or an, a trickster spirit, they do exist and you shouldn't be afraid of them. But they do, when they're touching you, it doesn't feel good, it feels creepy, it feels strange. When angels do, it feels kind of like a hug or a kiss, very common. Now there are other angel signs, like quite a few other angel signs that I'm not gonna go through in deference to time, but again, we do have this uh, available in a PDF. This was uploaded to your student portal yesterday, so it's there right now, and at a later time you can go through it. I kind of explain what each sign is and what to look for, and you can see if you've had some angel signs in the past or maybe you're experiencing them right now.